I wonder how many people will judge me for this. I'm about to repel a 65 meter repel with a 60 meter rope and that doesn't work. And so we're gonna talk about how not to hike for five miles with two 60s as some recommended on Mountain Project. So I brought some 2.5 millimeter, eighth inch uh, Dyneema string and it's very slippery so it's hard to hang on to and it also doesn't tie knots well and that's what we're going to explore is not blocking the rappel station up here repelling off of one strand and using this as a pull line and canyoneers are like yeah what's the point of this video well some climbers they don't know this trick and they bring two 60s up here when you barely need 140 meter all right, so Andrew's gonna go first. And what we have here are two quick links, and that is what we're repelling on. She is only going down one strand with her ATC, can that be a Grigory, whatever. Definitely always cross-load your carabiners. I should do that. And always put a knot in the end of your rope. Always make sure your stuff works before unclipping your personal anchor. Yeah. This is more or less a Samuel repel, whereas we'd both be able to go down right now if we knew we were able to reach. But because I don't know how my Joker 9.1 black ropes middle is, I don't know if that'll reach for her. And instead of me guessing, and then she has to mid cliff. Do a weird down climb? Yeah, where I'm just going to repel her. Pretend I was locked, I'm gonna edit that, that was locked the whole time. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to more or less belay her. So when you get to the end, let me know if you're on the ground and if you like the length, because if you do, that's when I'll tie my Dyneema to this end. Get down there. Is it? No. It's low angle. It just seems uh, silly to take more rope than you need, only for rappel. If you can use this trick, if this is a really long hike and only one pitch requires this. He said we sound silly for bringing an 80 meter up here. The cameraman feels judged. <laughs> <laughs> We're assuming my way works. And if I made the video, it did. If it didn't, it'll never make it on YouTube. <laughs> How's the rope length look? Definitely not long enough to make it. I hate when she says that. See, I can l give her rope, but otherwise you'd have to do some weird shenanigans in order to make sure that you have enough rope. And this is just a set rope length. One option is to give way more rope than I need. I know this is how much rope I'm gonna need. And so I'm gonna go down this rope. And so I'm going to do a knot block. I'm just gonna do an eight, you can do a butterfly. There are probably several ways you can do this. And we'll cover those later. Now the reason I can do an eight here is it's not gonna pull through those quick links. And one option I could do is I could clip the back of the eight. This is more of the canyon thing to where you've really made sure that'll never go through those quick links. Cause I don't want that knot to get stuck inside and then I can't pull this with my little string. Mm. But basically my string is going to extend this side of it and then I'm going to pull it down and I don't want to have any issues. But what I've seen many climbers do is they do that because you're never going to be able to pull that through. And if it does, it's still a closed system. Now do I want to make sure that it's not going to get stuck in those repel rings those quick links, I think that is super good enough. So now I'm going to repel the correct side and I'm going to make sure that I'm repelling the correct side before I take my personal anchor off. And I check to see if I can pull it down. And this is where this video gets interesting. How do you tie two ropes together that are of dissimilar diameters? Let's explore that together real quick. So instead of tossing all this down the mountain, I'm going to respect it and keep it with me in the meantime. This is a sheet bin. This is what some people would consider appropriate for two different diameters. And so you go through the bend and you go through here and it's gonna be constricted. I go under it. That is a sheet bend. And since I don't have a sheet, I'm gonna do a double sheet bend. And that's where maybe a thinner diameter can th thrive. Let's find out if this is true, because if I can't pull my rope down, that would suck. So if you wanna see a magic trick as I pull this down, mm -hmm. practice at home before you do stuff up here. So I'm just gonna tie, in this case, overhand that much and then tie a figure eight. I think that's like a frost eight. I don't know, put that in the comments because I don't know what certain knots are called. I just use them. And so now, I'm going to tie a figure eight, which is just 
just killing half the audience right now that I don't know what not to use, but I really need to pull my rope down reliably. I'm just gonna tr literally trace an eight back onto this. So we're gonna now go back to the lab and we are going to test which knot would have been appropriate and how bad that sheet bend would have been if I just kept it or did a triple or whatever. That, I can pull that down. So now I'm gonna keep that with me and I'm gonna start repelling. Test before you remove yourself. See ya. Can I have my phone? Yes! Fucking thing! Flick it in a bag. Don't coil it the way I did. And it's always better to do this when there's people at the belay station who can lower the rope for you if you screwed up. We could have done this way faster since they were up there already. They wouldn't have had a video. So this is pretty hard to hang on to. And so one thing I could do, wrap around a carabiner and pull. It's finally loose. You could just use those gloves that really protect the palms of your hand. It worked. Not oh. pretty and really fat. See you later. You should have used a butterfly. Let's go explore some knots in the lab. Now I know this is strong enough because all I'm doing is pulling it down, but we will break test this first because it's, well, already put together. And then we'll explore some of the other knots that I could hypothetically have used. Now you're probably wondering why I have a perfectly good, nice triple rated rope that I'm breaking. It's because I have a chunk of it from Bial for testing Unicore, where the sheath is glued to the core. Oh God! Oh, that's terrifying. And I abused the crap out of it. It is the next video I'm editing after I finish this one which it's also exciting that we finally have some BL ropes in our new store. And if you don't know we have a new store, well, we do. And the only people who have access to that is people in our email list. And all of the people in our email list this weekend will be able to access the store finally after 100 days of getting that open. Now, my patrons have helped me break test the store with over 100 orders. And we have shipped every day for the last 40 days, the day people have ordered it, because we take that real serious. And 90% of what people are ordering, we are shipping priority, because I think five or six days for shipping is BS, to be honest. I am going to be giving away this number six to somebody who opened up their email from this last Saturday. All you have to do is open emails to be entered to win. Beep at gmail.com won this one, and they're going to get a gift card for the equivalent of what this is worth if they're just, I don't know, not into off widths or something. So go sign up for our Saturday emails, and in the welcome email, I'll make sure that you have access to the domain and password so you can get on the store as soon as you do. Okay, so we have a figure eight right there, figure eight right there, and then I copied it on this side, and I copied it on this side. So let's find out what breaks first. 3.26. Well, I'm glad to see that this rope is stronger than this one. It broke in the knot. And there's the other side. Now I think the sheet bend could work if you're not cyclically loading it. So let's do a double and see how strong that is if it doesn't slip. That's not good. Mm, that's not holding. But it is about almost 100 pounds of force. The problem is if you're cyclically loading. Now, if you had a long enough tail, in theory, that would be okay. But I don't know, I'd wanna lock it off better. What do you guys think of sheet bins in this situation? So what if we just do a flat overhand, which is not all that uncommon? Now, I don't know if that knot is big enough to get stuck in the quick links because you are only repelling this side. That's not ideal. Mm, that might work. So now let's just try a fisherman's knot. No, oh, no. Oh, no. Well, that actually might have worked. So I'm genuinely curious what knot I should have used. What I did use worked, but it doesn't seem ideal. You kind of don't want your knot too big so it doesn't get stuck and stuff on the way down, but I kind of wanted it big enough to not go through the quick links. And to save you the trouble from commenting that I should have used a third hand, you're right. I should have used a Prusik as a backup if I'm gonna not use an assisted braking device. Anyways, let's see what knots you guys come up with and we'll make that a follow-up video. In the meantime, we did an alpine butterfly knot video that I think you might enjoy if you made it through this video. Oh, wow, it didn't break.